Yeah, so I'm Neil Hamilton. I'm the consultant pharmacist in pulmonary hypertension. Um, I work at the Royal Hallam Hospital, which is the PH centre in Sheffield. Uh, it's been a long time coming, but finally from April of 2019, um, NHS England have commissioned the use of Silexpag for pulmonary hypertension patients uh, in England. Similar approvals we've had uh, in Scotland and in Wales. So it's now available for us to prescribe for suitable patients uh, in, our, in, in any of the pulmonary hypertension uh, in centres in the UK. It's a new therapy um, which works on the prostanoid pathway. So it works in a very similar way to drugs such as Iloprost or Epiprostanol. It dilates blood vessels and what that means is it open up, opens up blood vessels allowing more blood to flow through the lungs and around the body. Uh, the difference with Selexapag is that it's a tablet as opposed to the more complex forms that we've currently got available working on that pathway and they must be nebulized and continuously infused through an, uh, an intravenous line um, or given subcutaneously. So um, there, are, there are some definite obviously convenience advantages and lots of patients would, might prefer a tablet to some of these other more difficult options. So the clinical trial for Selexapag was the largest one ever undertaken in pulmonary hypertension's worldwide study and many centres across the UK were involved and recruited patients to it. And what it showed was that Selexapag could stop the clinic, well, could slow or prevent clinical worsening for our patients. So the endpoints were around preventing hospitalisation, deterioration or worsening of the walk test and other sorts of factors that we in the clinic would use to measure how someone's pH looks at any time. So patients on Selexapag, as opposed to the placebo arm, tended to have longer until what they called an event, so uh, a, a symptom of worsening. In the clinical trial, they recruited patients with pulmonary hypertension, but of certain categories, so idiopathic patients, connective tissue patients, some patients with uh, congenital heart and so the drug has been approved um, with efficacy shown in certain groups so it's not for everybody and there will be some patients who come to clinic with pulmonary hypertension who won't be suitable because of the type of pH that they've got for Selexapag so we are somewhat restricted by um, the commissioners in terms of how it how, those restrictions on where we can prescribe it but those restrictions are born out of the data and the evidence that come from this big clinical trial. So there is um, a good reason for those restrictions and this won't be for everybody, but obviously we're really excited because it will be an option for a significant number of patients coming through. But the one place where it, it's not for is people who are actively getting worse, so who are feeling worse and things uh, seem to be progressing for them sadly. So for those patients, this is not really the right treatment um, unless there are exceptional circumstances which would mean that they couldn't have what we would think as slightly more intense forms of therapy such as uh, intravenous drug uh, or, or, or the uh, drug given through the nebulizer. So those are what we would are more likely to give if patients are getting worse, particularly intravenous therapy. Uh, we don't see Selexapag as a replacement for those. Um, but where we do see it is that for stable patients who we think and they would like to feel just that little bit better. So this is about getting stable patients and, and prolonging um, their, their, their journey with pH and preventing them from getting worse rather than treating them when they are getting worse. So just to emphasize then, we don't see this treatment in the large part as a replacement for IV drug. Um, we would use uh, intravenous drug in carefully selected patients. Um, it's all about choosing the right patients to get the best out of the therapy with intravenous, with an intravenous drug. And Selexapag isn't a replacement for that. Um, if patients are getting worse to an extent that we would consider them for intravenous drug and talking about other things such as transplantation, then Selexapag is really not for that, uh, that type of patient. There will be exceptions, uh, so this isn't a blanket rule, but there will be exceptions where uh, it's difficult to give IV drug or one of the more complex therapies and a tablet form is the only thing that can be done. But we would see those as very much exceptions rather than, uh, rather than the rule. My advice is that if you think that 
you might like to give to Lexifag a try, you think it might benefit you, understanding what I've said on this, uh, on this, on this talk, then I think the thing to do is to, when you go to clinic, have a discussion with the docs at the BH centers. They're the experts. They know you better than, uh, than anyone else. And they also will have access to all the tests and all the results. And then you can make a, a good decision between you as to whether Selexpag is the right treatment for you. So to sum up, Selexpag is undoubtedly an exciting treatment option that's now available to us to prescribe. Um, patients should, if they're interested, have a discussion at the next clinic visit. Uh, this won't be a treatment that's for everybody, and this isn't a treatment uh, for people who are getting worse. You know, there are other treatments that would be more appropriate in those situations. Uh, but have a conversation. Ask the question when you come to clinic. Um, it's an important addition to the other treatments that we have available, and uh, we're looking forward to managing patients with Selexpag.